Okay, everybody, sorry, we had a little bit of a communication glitch there, but we're going to try this again. Amen. So I'm Apostle Dr. Linda, this is Apostle Jeff, and welcome to Covenant Life Church. Amen. Armani says we're looking good. All right. Amen. Okay, honey, would you pray for us, please? Yes. Father, we just bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for the cross and for sending Jesus. We thank you for the blood covenant that we're going to hear about today. And Lord, we just receive from you the righteousness that you have provided for us. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So before we get started today, I want to thank anybody who's new today and all those who are not new. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you very much. And uh, we want to thank you very much for participating in our corporate day fast yesterday. Amen. We are believing God for great things and we continue. Uh, we believe that we're going to have a more exciting year uh, this year. Amen. And um, want to encourage you to tune in. Uh, January 16th is our word of the Lord. And that's going to be our first live service uh, at our facility for this year. And um, we want to in, uh, encourage you to come out. Uh, we do uh, hold to the CDC protocols and so that everyone is safe. And uh, so we do practice social distancing, mask wearing and check temperature, et cetera. And so we believe that you'll be safe in coming out. And then we want to in encourage you. Uh, so the 16th is our word of Lord, our first live service. Um, and then from then on, we'll be doing uh, Friday, Sunday live services, as well as Facebook. And we will continue on Facebook like we have been uh, Monday night uh, and then uh, Friday, Sunday, of course. Yeah. And so we just want to encourage you. We also have prophetic class on uh, Sundays, usually most Sundays uh, from one to two. And uh, if you want to be tuned in to our prophetic class, it's, it's free. Prophetess Dr. Shayla teaches that. And uh, if you want to be used in the gifts of spirit and all of that, I encourage you to be uh, tuning into that class. Uh, if you have never participated and you want to, uh, just uh, type in your email address and uh, Prophetess Dr. Shayla will send a Zoom link to you so that you can Zoom in or you can come in person uh, to the facility. And I, I believe her first prophetic class is going to be uh, January 23rd. So Armani, would you uh, check that with uh, Pastor Andrea? But I think that's correct. Or, or um, Dr. Shayla. And uh, I think it's uh, January 23rd. So we just want to invite you, though, to uh, come out and, and be with us. Uh, also, if, uh, you, if you're new and don't know where our website is, it's www.covenant-life-church.org. And we appreciate any donations you can send in. There's a donation button on the on the front page, and uh, there's lots of stuff on our on our website. Uh, we encourage you to, to peruse through it and take a take a look. Uh, you can see, even see old sermons uh, that were from our conferences and our guests, many guest speakers. And we've had a lineup uh, in the last years of many great speakers. And this year, we also are going to have some conferences coming up uh, next month. We're going to have Apostle Enos and Diane Chamberlain, and so you're going to see some. Uh, email uh, traffic that will tell you the uh, dates for our special events coming up. And uh, we're also going to be doing some new things on Friday night. Uh, we're going to be doing, excuse me, uh, some uh, fun events. Um, so we want to invite you to stay tuned in uh, to Friday night. And um, it's, it's going to, it's, it's really, it's, this year is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have things like uh, job fairs and how to do resumes and health fairs and uh, various topics that we're gonna we're gonna teach on and have fun with on on Friday night and still do uh, activations and you'll still get ministry amen mm -hmm. so Friday night is going to turn into a fun time so we want to encourage you to stay tuned okay again if you're not on our mailing list please type in your email address uh, so that we can put you on the on the mailing list or your okay. telephone number so we can send you a text. Amen. Right on. Thank and you. We don't spam anybody. So don't. Right. Amen. So we want to thank you again for tuning into the broadcast. Amen. And uh, with that, uh, oh, by the way, there was um, there was an email. Uh, Pastor Andrea sent out an e email and a text uh, highlighting certain things. Um, and so if you didn't get that again, uh, send us your phone number or your email address. So that we can add you to the to the list. Uh, when something comes out from Covenant Life Church, um, it's usually we're trying to inform you about something. So uh, it's not like a spam, like like Pastor Jeff was just saying. Okay, we're just giving you updates. Um, if there's any closures, any events coming up, and so forth. 
Right. So it really is a value added uh, communication. Right. So I would encourage you don't just de delete it, but take take a look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, case in point was we had several that didn't know that we were fasting and we had sent out communications on it and they were on the mailing list. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes people accidentally, and sometimes it might go into your spam. Mm -hmm. um, so just want, want you to watch uh, for that. Okay. All right. So with that, we'll turn it over to Pastor Jeff. Amen. Well, today, as you may know, uh, is Communion Sunday, our first communion for 2022. And I wanted to teach and minister on the grace of God and the blood covenant. Because you see, if communion, like anything else, can just become a ritual, it can be just, just something we do because it's the second Sunday of the month or whatever, you know, something like that. But if you understand grace and, and the blood covenant and you, and you receive by faith what has been provided for, it can't be a ritual. It'll be a spiritual experience. It'll be encouraging and uplifting like it was meant to be. All right, so I'm going to start talking about grace first. Because there's been many misconceptions in the church, not our church, but in a lot of places, concerning what grace is and what it is not. Some people think it's an excuse to live a sinful lifestyle, while others view it as an excuse to be a lazy Christian. I don't have to grow spiritually. I'm covered by grace. These mis misconceptions about grace cloud the true purpose and value of the grace of God upon our lives. Grace is not merely a subject. It's not just a doctrine. It's not just a teaching. Grace is a person. Amen. And grace is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace describes all that he has done and all that he is. All right? Amen. So let's cheer. turn with me to Jude. Chapter three, Jude chapter three. Right there, can I get a grab my uh, recorder? Jude chapter three. Beloved, why was not chapter three, verse three? There's only one chapter. Beloved, why was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation? I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. And for certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our Lord, of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So thus there were even way back then in the very beginning of the church, there was those that were there to take advantage of the grace. Now, <clears throat> grace is what we need when we approach God. We don't approach him on, on our righteousness or what we are. We approach him in, because by faith we're in Christ. And Christ is our righteousness. Christ is our reason. Uh, that we're, we can, we are belong to God. But there are some in the church, even today, even on Christian television, they don't actually come out and say, well, you can do whatever you want because of grace, but they imply that by what they teach. And I have to say, this is one of the reasons why I don't sus subscribe to the once saved, always saved teaching. Because if that was true, then you don't have to live holy. There would be, you don't have to uh, uh, try to please God. You don't have to grow in grace. You don't have to do anything. Well, <clears throat> I understand that grace of God is something that can never be taken away from us. But the grace of God is not something I can't give up. Are you listening to me? The question is, is a Christian saved? Always saved. Yes, a Christian is. The question is, 
what's a Christian? Well, you say the first time you believed in Christ, you received grace and you're born again. And you... <clears throat> yeah, all that is very, very true. Thank God. But there's also a thing where if you, if you return to the vomit, so to speak, if you return to the old life, to the old life of the flesh, you can progress to a place where you don't value Jesus. You don't appreciate what he's done and get right down to it. You stop believing in him. And when that happens, I'm, I'm here to, to tell you that this is what I believe anyway. When that happens, you are in very near, very in a dangerous position where you can lose your salvation. Yes, I believe you can. So it's important that we understand grace and the blood and that by faith we receive their benefits. As born again Christians, we've received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. We rule and reign in life. Romans 5.17 says, For if by one man's offense, death reign through the one, much more those who received an abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Now, <clears throat> you might not look like an overcomer. You might not look like somebody who's reigning. Uh, but because of his grace, we're being kept in a position where we can dominate the evil, dominate the darkness. And this world is getting dark. I mean, it is just, well, I don't have to tell you, you live here too. And you know full well what I mean. Uh, it, it's just atrocious what's being allowed in society today. We have been called to freedom. However, we should not allow our freedom to be an incentive to the flesh. The flesh is a way of thinking that goes against God. The flesh is the pull of the sin nature that we inherited from Adam that we still have. But because of grace and the righteousness of Christ, we can overcome that nature. We can live above that nature. We can be victorious. And I, I am committed to the concept that Christians need to apply the grace of God, the power of God, the blood covenant to a place where we walk in victory. And walking in victory doesn't mean there's no problems. Walking in victory means instead of the problems having me, I dominate over them. So Galatians 5.13 says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty or freedom. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Now here's the, one of the keys to not being in the flesh, and that's loving other people. You see, I can't sin against you and love you at the same time. Amen. If I walk in love towards other people, the grace of God helps me overcome. Sin has no dominion over us. We are no longer under the law, but under grace. We're not under law, we're under grace. Thank God because the law could not impart righteousness and it didn't have the power to live right. Law keeping will take you down the wrong path. And that's why I don't want communion to become for us another ritual. I don't want rituals. I want reality. I want something I can appropriate with my faith. I want to know why God instituted this. And you know what? God wants you to know why. He wants you to understand what you believe and why you believe it. 
I have never yet had God get angry with me when I ask him to explain something or, or to teach me something or to show me something. Uh, not because of doubt, but because I don't understand it and I want to understand more. And that is, quite frankly, when you really begin to grow in God is when you start to study his word and ask him. You really learn to hear his voice when you want to know and you ask him. Amen. Many times God starts a conversation with us by asking us a question. Where are you, Elijah? Well, it's not like he was lost and God didn't know where he was. It was to open a question. What are you doing here? What do you think you're doing? Amen. Okay. All right. So the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness. When grace comes, it teaches something. It teaches us to deny being ungodly. There's no free ticket to sin or do whatever I want. You know, sometime, one time I was talking with a guy that's living with a woman he's not married to. And he told me because of grace, it, it doesn't matter. And I told him because of, it's because of grace that it does matter. Are you with me here? Grace teaches us. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation. Notice it's the grace of God that brings us our salvation. Has appeared to all men. The free gift of salvation being born again. Being reconciled to God. Comes from the grace of God. And has been revealed to all men. Does that mean all men believe it? No, of course not. But it's available to them. I said the grace of God is available to everybody. And it's teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Why? Because we're looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Amen. God's people are zealous to do good things, to do good works. Amen. And it, the, the godliness is taught by the grace of God. I guarantee you, your flesh and the devil aren't teaching you to be right, to live righteously. It's God's grace that teaches us to deny the ungodliness and the worldly lusts and to be sober and righteous and godly in this present age. And that requires the Holy Spirit. I said that requires the Holy Spirit. The only sacrifice that God accepts and that the Holy Spirit moves for is for, the, is for the blood of Christ and what Christ did on the cross. It's turning to Christ. If I'm struggling with an issue like chocolate donuts, let's say, say uh, that's the sin issue, not that chocolate donuts are a sin, but that's the sin issue I'm trying to overcome. And brother, I want to tell you, every time I go outside, there's somebody nearby eating a chocolate donut. Every place I go, there's a, sub, there's a place that has chocolate donuts. It seems like it's in front of me all the time. The only way to overcome that is to receive the power of God through his grace. You're not going to overcome it. You know, I'm not saying free will, your own strength. You can't resist some things. But God, but God in Christ reconciled himself to us so that he could empower us to live the way we're supposed to live. That, that's what the cross is about. 
He empowered us to live. The law can't do that. It doesn't empower anyone. It makes atonement possible through the blood sacrifices on the altar. But the blood of animals and goats didn't cleanse from sin. It simply covered it so that God could react and live with and deal with his people. And that's why sometimes you'll see God bring judgment on, on people and on things in the Old Testament that you don't see now. And the reason for it is the blood of Christ. The sin issue is a settled issue as far as God's concerned. He's ready to be great, merciful to whoever asks him, whoever comes to him by grace through faith. But there are many who do not. And so we still live in a sin fallen world. We definitely do. And that's the reason we have so much trouble and, and different difficulties and tests and trials and different problems. Amen. And we're looking for something. We're looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're looking for that event to take place. Those that have this hope in him purify themselves, even as he is pure. Because, saints, we're not just living for this life. We're living for the one to come. Everything we do in this life is getting us ready to live forever and ever and ever in the next. I, I know I, I do it myself. I get so wrapped up in cares and concerns of this life and paying bills and um, you know there's family obligations and you know, things I have to meet and, and, and obligations that I have but saints all of that if you could put it in this little bottle right here wouldn't be worth two seconds in, in eternity with God in the power of his grace amen we should not go halfway, but go all the way in our service to righteousness where there is safety. Service to God in righteousness. Romans 6, verse 12. I'm just going to look it up here. I'm just feel impressed. Romans 6, verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of righteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Now here he's referring to instruments. And I, I think that's good because he's talking about your hands, basically. You know, you... You use an instrument with your hands. Electricians, when they work, we use screwdrivers and pliers and different wrenches and things. And we apply it with our hands. They're instruments. What he's saying is, is don't present yourself to sin. Present yourself to God. Amen. And, and we can do that because of the grace of God. So we should not go halfway, but go all the way. Grace is not a license to become lazy. The phrase resting in God does not describe inactivity. Resting in God describes our determination to trust God while working, working with him. In other words, we've got a perfect example right here. Linda has been struggling physically for a while now. We still believe for a healing. We're still keep believing for a miracle. We're still believing that we're going to come through this thing victorious. In fact, we know we're going to come through victorious. But it's taken a little longer than I would have liked. It's been a little harder to deal with than a lot of other things we've had to confront. And, and so uh, we understand what it means that we, ha we have to rest in God by faith. 
we, we stay at peace. We stay centered in his love. That doesn't mean there aren't days when I don't get very discouraged. Linda doesn't get discouraged. It doesn't mean there aren't times when we really begin to think to ourselves, gee, I wonder if this is ever going to end. But we answer those things by the word of God from the peace of God that's within our spirits. And that get is there by the grace of God. God is at work in us, giving us the desire to do what he has called us to do. Amen. Doing what God has called you to do will always have his grace upon it. And here I'm going to give you the greatest work you can do in the kingdom. This is the greatest thing. This will have the most reward in heaven. For whom, this is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So God in his foreknowledge predestined that the one thing, predestined means predetermined. This is something God selected. This is part of the will and plan of God is for us to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, you know and I know that's a tall order because Christ was perfect. And so the target is a very high target. But you see, the higher the target, when you fall short, you're much higher when you fall short than you would be if you were shooting at a low target and miss. You, you follow me? So God sets a high standard. In fact, in the New Testament, the standards are higher than they are in the old. People don't think that or believe, but it is. Adultery was wrong in the Old Testament. Adultery is wrong in the New Testament. In fact, if you just look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. Whoa, oh man, hold on, Jesus. Uh-huh, yeah. That means we have to have the power of the Spirit. All right, we need the Spirit's power to help us live right and to be right and be in right standing with God. You know, the Bible says, test yourself to see if you be in the faith. I ask my once saved, always say, friends, all the time, what is there a test for if you can't fail it? And they have a litany of reasons and discussions, but for the most part, they just ignore that question. And the reason for it is you can't answer it. The answer is that we have to have our faith is challenged. When our faith is challenged, we grow. And as we grow, we get closer to God. And the greatest thing you can do, any child of God can do, the thing that you can do that will bring the most reward in heaven, when we get there, is conformity to Christ. That is a predetermined, God in his foreknowledge, when he conceived salvation, when he conceived the cross, he also conceived this, that the ones that are born again would conform to the example that he set before us, that we would conform, we would conform to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren and many sisters. <laughs> yeah, amen. He could be born. We should be pre we should be conformed to be like Jesus. And what we do in this life, become more like Jesus, is what's rewarded in heaven above anything else i believe you could get a thousand people saved through your testimony 
but if the if you spent two days doing what you needed to do to be more like Jesus, that two days gets you more reward than a thousand salvations. And you know me, you know how important, and Linda, you know how important salvation is. We, we, there isn't hardly anything we do more of or try to do more of than to get people saved. Amen. Linda was in our rehab center during Thanksgiving. And she witnessed to everybody that walked in the room. I mean, the janitor got saved. Amen. And so we're just grateful uh, for, for the Lord. And we're grateful that he gives us rewards for serving him. When really just being saved from our sins is more than enough. But he does even more than that. Amen. All right. So grace is not an encouragement to settle for miserable circumstances. God will strengthen us in bad situations and circumstances. But he also gives us the grace to improve and overcome those circumstances. He is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to us in abundance. There's a, a grace to help us succeed and remain victorious no matter what we face. Listen to me. Because of God's grace, we can be at peace and go through whatever it is we have to go through, confront whatever we have to confront, deal with whatever you have to deal with, and come through victorious victory amen amen grace is not cheap grace is free through the cross of christ but it's not cheap just because something is free doesn't mean it's cheap grace and righteousness are free to us but they were purchased at a very high price the price of the precious blood of jesus and now we're, we're going to talk about the blood now all right, sometime between the Lord's death on the cross and his resurrection, the Holy Spirit, the etern by the eternal spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, he brought the blood sacrifice from Calvary and placed it on the altar in heaven, in the heavenly holy of holies. That blood is still there. It's still there for you, and it's still there for me. Nothing in heaven corrupts or can be corrupted. If it was kept here, it would eventually dry, turn to powder, and blow away. In heaven, that blood is there, just as pure, just as powerful, and just as necessary as it's ever been. The blood of the Lamb. What makes me able to sit here? And you to sit out there is the blood of the lamb. There is still power in the blood of Jesus. Today we're going to examine just what kind of power are within the blood of Jesus. First of all, there is the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. Because of his blood sacrifice, I can through faith appropriate forgiveness not just forgiveness, but cleansing from all unrighteousness through the fact that the blood of the lamb is still up there. All right. When we take communion, that's what we're referencing to. That's what we're celebrating. And it is a celebration. That's what we're celebrating. That's what we're, we're by faith appropriating. That's what we're giving God thanks for. All right. We're saying, thank you, Lord, for this sacrifice. Amen. There's cleansing power of the blood, power for forgiveness and removal of sin. Forgiveness of your sin is a finished work as far as God is concerned. Having forgiven you all your trespasses. This means the price was paid for any sin you have or ever will commit. To receive, you simply need to accept the gift by confessing and appropriating the power of the blood. My little children, 1 John 2, 1 says, my little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, 
Jesus Christ the righteous. We repent and tell the Lord Jesus we're sorry. And Jesus appropriates the blood to our sin and cleanses us from all unrighteousness, all of it. Now, I'm forgiven already. All sins I ever have committed and all sins I ever will commit. Well, then why aren't you once saved? Always saved. Because the power of sin can take the faith that appropriates that. Isn't that right, Linda? That the sin is deadly. The wages of sin is death. And that's what the death is. The death kills your faith. See, if if you are a Christian and 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 walk away from it, the devil doesn't want you to die. You're his witness. <laughs> Amen. He, but Christians need to walk in the newness of life. Amen. Right. For, and the second verse of 1 John 2, verse 2, and he is a propitiation for our sins. Now, that word propitiation just simply means sacrifice. And he mm -hmm. is the sacrifice for our sins. Yeah. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. That sacrifice is big enough, Amen. powerful enough to overcome every sin everywhere and every place at all times. Amen. That's why we have confidence. That's why we love Jesus. That's why we want to serve him from our hearts. Amen. Because our hearts have been converted. Amen. Amen. After we receive the benefit of the blood of God, the benefit of the blood, God's hostility to us is finished. God's hostility to the world is finished. The message of the hour to those who don't know Christ is not to beat them up for homosexuality, not to beat them up over abortion or any one of the many social issues of today. The answer is to tell them, God's not angry at you. Yes, amen. Be okay. reconciled to God. Amen. God's, I have to tell myself, yeah. God's not angry with me. Amen. I've been reconciled. All got to do that. He anyway. may not. He <laughs> may not be pleased with everything I'm doing. <laughs> Just like when your children do stuff, they do stuff every day that you're probably not pleased with, but you don't go down there and slap the daylights out of them. You love them anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm chuckling because we all do the same thing. We all think yes, immediately we mm -hmm. that we're, we did something wrong. You know, that was the first thing I thought when I was getting sick. I wonder what I did wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I was That's up the in, first thought every You know, has. up in the ICU bed, I said, Lord, give me a second chance. Just in case I messed up. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. was up there making deals. <laughs> yeah. 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 And he's merciful. Praise God. <laughs> the deal has already been made. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're human. You still do it. You know. Oh, yeah. yeah you, still, you still talk to him about like that, you know. Yeah, I know. It's very human. Yes, it is. So there's power in the blood for personal justification. Good standing with God. That's what justification is. Good standing with God. Job pondered the question many years ago, how should a man be just with God? The blood covenant has always been the price to stand before a holy God. Always. Now through the complete work of Christ's atoning blood, we can stand before God completely, holy, and pure by a new and living word way. Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter the holy, holiest by the blood of Jesus. My goodness, my goodness. Entering the holiest of all. You had to be the high priest to go in there. And even then, only once a year. Now we can walk right in. Good heavens. By a new and living way, which we, which he has consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh. There's also many other variables of power within the blood of Jesus Christ and our powerful blood covenant with him. Other variable 
and blessings are power for peace. Colossians 1 20, having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Specifically, we're talking about the inner peace and the harmony that we have with God. When we lay our heads down to sleep at night, we're at rest because of the blood that we belong to God. The power of the blood provides for healing, physical healing, mental and emotional healing. Seekers don't give up because there's still a conduit of healing flowing to those who are ill in body, mind, or emotional makeup. And here's something I think is very important that not many of us think of. First Peter 1.18, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by the traditions from your fathers, but with precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without stop, the eternal blood of Jesus. We're going to take communion now. And I want everybody to just take a moment and reflect on the goodness of God. Yes. The greatness of God. Amen. Thanking him, trusting him, Amen. believing him, receiving what he has done for us by faith, knowing that I'm right with God because of the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Because of the cross of Christ. Amen. That was the ultimate and final sacrifice. It's the last thing God was the last time God ever dealt with sin was on that cross. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He doesn't even think about it anymore. Amen. Final sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So let's just pray. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Receive cleansing and forgiveness, strength and encouragement, and power to live a new and living way to be victorious over sin, death, hell, and the grave. We thank you for the power of the blood. We thank you for what Christ did on the cross. We thank you for accepting us and loving us, that we are your children. Right now, Lord, I repent of you filling the blank. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You take your bread element, please. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the bread. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the, covenant, of the blood. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're looking forward to you coming. But you're going to be here with us very soon. A lot sooner than a lot of people think. Amen. We Amen. bless you and thank you. And we receive our cleansing, our forgiveness, our strength. Amen. In Amen. Jesus thank name. you, honey. So, Armand, if we have any prayer requests. I uh, will take them also. Okay. If you have prayer requests today, uh, just chat them in. Okay. And we'll, we'll be sure to pray for you too. Okay. So we're going to, uh, I don't see any prayer requests right now. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go into prophetic ministry. Okay. Amen. And 
We just seal the word, Father. We stir up the prophetic and apostolic in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So this first word is for uh, Lawrence Sater. I apologize for, if we said it wrong. Okay, first word is for Lawrence Sater. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, Father, we just come before you right now in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we thank you for, for Lawrence. For the, for the Lord says, surely I'm doing a new work in, in your life in this season, says the Lord. And the Lord says that as you get into my word more in this season, God says, there's going to be a fresh stirring within your spirit. And the Lord says that, that my word is going to open to you in a new way. For this is a new season, says God. And yes, you've heard that before. It's a new season, a new way. But it truly is, says God. But the Lord says that there's a new level of the anointing that's going to come upon you, says the Lord. Amen. The Lord says that you're called to prophetic ministry. And the Lord says, I'm going, to, I'm going to stir you in that way, in that dimension. And the Lord says, let this be a season of teaching for you, says God. I get all that, that you can get of the prophetic. And as you do that, and as you open the word, uh, God says there's going to be a new level of wisdom and a new level of understanding that is going to come into your spirit. And God says, I'm going to even heal you from the things of days gone by. Uh, says the says the Lord. There's been much hurt in in your life in previous previous days, and the Lord says that I I have always been there for you. And even as the devil tried to tell you that I wasn't, that was not true. Mm -hmm. The Lord says I even raised you and I kept you and I preserved you and I brought you to this moment, to this time, to this day. Says the Lord. And so the Lord says that I've even surrounded you uh, with people that could encourage you and love you. Says the Lord. And the Lord says yes. There may have been times in the past when that was not always so. But the Lord says, I'm, I brought you into a new understanding and a new day, says the Lord. So receive of my spirit in this new way, in this new day, uh, says, says God. Amen. Amen. Can you just bless this man, please? Lord, we just send your blessing to Lawrence Seder. Yes. We ask you, Father, to open his, the eyes of his understanding, be opened, that he may know the riches of your calling. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. We just seal that word right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, this is for, uh, I don't know if this is wife or daughter, but this is Angela Seder. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you for Miss Angela Seder. And the Lord says that surely you have a prophetic calling as well. And the Lord says that this is a new day for you also. And God says that as you get into the word, you're going to see it's just going to be like things are going to spring out uh, to you, says, says the Lord. And the Lord says that, that you have a, there's going to be a new level of revelation that comes into you into your spirit uh, this year. And the Lord says that you're even going to have more dreams and visions. And you're mm -hmm. going to have an understanding about God and his ways that you have not had uh, previously. It's going to be a new mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. of understanding. Mm -hmm. And what I'm sensing in my spirit, Miss Angela, is like sometimes it seems like, you know, we intellectually know about God, mm -hmm. but with our heart, we don't really know him like mm -hmm. a friend. And I'm sensing in this season that he's going to become more of a friend to you. He's going to become more real uh, in, in your heart. Just like mm -hmm. I know my husband. Amen. He's real in my heart. Amen. Mm -hmm. And God is going to become more real to you in very tangible ways uh, mm -hmm. that are going to really minister to your spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, Father, we just thank you right now uh, for, the, uh, for that revelation that's mm -hmm. going to come into her spirit. In this brand new way. Yes. And then, I just oh, you hear the Lord saying to encourage you to expect for new things. Yeah. To expect for new revelations and new things. God is going to reveal them to you. Uh, I'd encourage you to keep a book and a, something to write with next to your bed. So that if he speaks to you in the night or you have a vision or a dream or something, you can write it down. And meditate on it later. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we just seal that word right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And, and that's a, a very good tip what Apostle Jeff just said. Um, I used to do that uh, all, all the time mm -hmm. because I'll, I'll tell you, when God gives you something, you always think that you can remember it. And but, you don't. but the devil steals it from you. That's and so, nice. you know, there's been things I got four or five in the morning. I thought, well, I'll remember it eight o'clock when I wake up. No. <laughs> no. So I found that I have to write it. I even keep my, uh, my not only does the devil not try to steal it, but God thinks, well, you didn't appreciate it. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You, you weren't grateful. I'll tell you what, if God shows me something in a dream, I'm going to write it down. Amen. Amen. I'll even turn the light on and work, wake Linda up. She mm -hmm. won't mind. That's right. And write something down yeah, so it. that we have it later. That's Amen. right. Amen. Every, everything from the Lord is precious. Amen. And, and, uh, 
it, it, you know, you want to get it right then while it's hot off the press. Amen. Amen. So Lord, we seal that word right now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, okay. We've got uh, Mia Sean. Okay. Mia Sean. Amen. You want to start? No. Bless her. Okay. So Father, we just uh, thank you for us, Mia. Amen. And Mia, what I'm hearing, Lord, say, daughter, I'm going to, I'm bringing you into uh, more, a greater health. Amen. Uh, the Lord is uh, working on, on your heart and he's working on uh, your emotional realm to, uh, to heal you. Amen. And so the Lord says that there's been some tough times and days gone by. And even now I sense that you're going through a, a, a tough time. And, and the Lord says, I've not abandoned you. God says, I'm with you and I love you. And the Lord says, I want you to rely on the things of me, rely on my word and trust me, says God. And yes, I know it's hard. There's some things uh, going on in your life right now that make it more difficult. But the Lord says that, that I'm in the midst of, of, of your life. And God says, even though that it's, there might be things that are surrounding you that are difficult, God says, you can rely on me. You can rely on my word. My word is true. And I watch over my word to perform it. So the Lord says, don't look at the circumstances of life, but look to me, the author and the finisher of your faith and apply the scriptures to your, to your situation, says God, and speak my word, confess my word and believe in my word. And the Lord says, and I'm going to even... I'm even now working to straighten things out within your life and to encourage you in a brand new way. So the Lord says, just know that I'm for you and I'm not against you. And there is a healing work going on in your body right yes. now, uh, says, says the Lord. Amen. And uh, I just hear, what's her? Mia. Mia. Mia, I just hear, I believe I'm hearing from the Lord that don't let other people put you in a box. Don't let other people tell you what you can and can't do, where you can go and can't go. Be open. Be open to the Lord. I believe in the not too distant future, there's going to be an opportunity for business. Amen. And if you've already got a business, then it's going to increase. But I believe there's a, a business coming because God doesn't want you under anybody's thumb. Amen. And you have to believe that you can get out from under their thumb too. You have to believe that God is going to bring, because I'll tell you now, starting a business is a tough, amen. I'd rather start mm -hmm. another ministry than start a business. I'll tell you that. So dig in, get determined, kick the devil in the teeth and keep on going in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And so I I definitely bear witness with that. As possible, I was talking about business and we just wanted you to know that there's going to be a grace on it for you because yeah. you're called to it. Just as he was talking about grace today, the Lord, when God calls you to something, there is a grace on it. Mm -hmm. So he'll show you how to do it. Just ask him and he'll show you how to do it. And he'll be with you and, and he'll, he can make it easier for you because his grace is on it. Amen. Amen. So we seal that word in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay. This next word, um, we got Evelyn Wang and Armani. If you can let me know um, with, when they have the same name like that, if they're married or a father, son, mother, daughter, whatever, just so I know. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, honey. Appreciate that. Okay. Amen. So this word again is for Evelyn Wayne. Okay. Praise God. Father, we just come before you right now in Jesus name. And Lord, I just thank you for Miss Evelyn. Uh, Lord, we just lift her up to you right now in the name of Jesus. And the Lord would say, daughter, surely, uh, surely this is a new day for you. And God says that, yes, there's been disappointments and days gone by. But the Lord says, my word is true. And you've seen many miracles even in your life. And you believe me for great things and you've seen great things. And so the Lord says, I'm continuing uh, to do a great work within your life. Uh, says the Lord. And the Lord says that uh, I'm even uh, causing uh, even a, a new hope to come in into your, your life, spirit, says, says, says God. The Lord says that. Amen. Uh, I'm even and so the Lord uh, says, causing, uh, be encouraged uh, today. A, a new hope to come in into your life, spirit. Says,
Okay, we're just having a little bit of a problem here today. All right, how's that on? Having a little bit of a problem here today. All right, how's that on? Having a little bit of a problem here today. All right, how's that on? Having a little bit of a problem here today. All right, how's that on? Having a little bit of a problem here today. I Yeah, sorry about this, folks. Uh, every now and then we have a little glitch. Let's straighten it out here. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just hang in there with us. Thank you, Lord. We're going to switch devices here very soon, I think. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, Armani, how does it sound now? Okay, Armani, how does it sound now? Okay, Armani, how does it sound now? Michelle, you're out there. Uh, how's it sound now? Okay. It's really strange, isn't it? When we get into prophetic ministry, then this thing that acts okay. up. It's really strange, isn't it? When we get into prophetic ministry, then this thing that acts yeah, up. Yeah, the blind spirits. It's really strange, isn't it? When we get into prophetic ministry, then this thing that acts yeah, up. Yeah, the blind spirits. It's really strange, isn't it? When we get into prophetic ministry, then this thing that acts up. It's really strange, isn't it? When we get into prophetic ministry, then this thing that acts up. Okay, 
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start going to the phase for this. Okay, we're gonna Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna get out of the line of Okay. Let's go for some more. Let's see if we can fix this. Okay. Let's see if we can fix this. Yeah, coming in on on that end. There are no other devices on, just my phone and the laptop. The phone is not on Facebook. No. No, I'm too good to you. What's that? Okay, let's try that. It's very strange, isn't it? All of a sudden, start acting up. Oh. Okay, now it's low. Laptop volume is low now. Okay. Yeah, it could, it could be the laptop. The laptop volume may have to be off. Okay, let's see. All right, let me try that. We might as well see if we can fix it right now. Okay, laptop laptop volume is off. Is that better? Much better. Okay. So you can still stay here on that end? Yes. Good. Very good. All right. Well, thank you. You're brilliant, Armani. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad you're brilliant. <laughs> I decided this time I'm just gonna plug through and see if we can fix this. No, you know, I don't know. I'm glad you called because I was texting. I was like, turn the other volume off. Yeah, every now and then. And so, um, my iPhone is plugged into you. I'm not on Facebook on my iPhone. Okay, no, and that's what I have to do to monitor what what you're saying. So we're we're good there. So okay, if this is working, it's good. Okay. Well, praise God, the devil didn't win. Amen. Amen. So <laughs> we're going to continue on. That's okay. We're going to continue on. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So it's on to the other two. Thank you, Armani. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, this is real time, folks. Praise God for our people know, know what to do. <laughs> Amen. All right. Let's see here. Where were we? We are at Evelyn and you is the husband. Okay. Evelyn and you, praise God. All right. We're just glad you can hear. Amen. Okay. This word is for Evelyn and you, Wang. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Praise God. Father, we just thank you uh, for this wonderful husband wife team. And the Lord says, yes, I am doing a new work in your life, says the Lord. And the Lord says, you're also prophetic. But God says that you hear my voice with a clarity. And in this season, that, that even that anointing is going to increase. And I hear the Lord say that you're also called, called to business. God says that I have a business for you, and I'm going to increase business, that a business entrepreneurial anointing in your life. And the Lord says that uh, you also have a God business, you're called to ministry. But there's also a business uh, in the marketplace environment that you are also called to do. And the Lord says that I'm gonna teach you and instruct you in the way that you should go. And God says that I'm gonna even uh, cause uh, people to come to you to help you to uplift your arms. Uh, for the Lord says, even this past season, there's been a struggle with finance and there's been a struggle uh, within the family unit. And God says that you've been crying out to me for help. And the Lord says that I am saving members of your household and I'm reaching down into your household, says God. And I'm doing a new, new work within each member, even by my spirit, says the Lord. So the Lord says, I want you to be encouraged this day that I'm with you, I've not abandoned you. And God says that I hear your prayers. For the Lord says, even as the word says, that the, that the righteous cry out and the Lord hears. Amen. And there's a scripture that says he delivers us out of all of our troubles. Amen. He delivers us out of all of our troubles. Isn't that a wonderful word? Amen. No, he, <laughs> praise God. He doesn't, he doesn't give us a timeline for that but he delivers us out of all of our troubles. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because God is good. Amen. And Psalm uh, 3419, many other afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Amen. And so I want to, I thought I had that scripture right in front of me. He delivers us out of all of our troubles. I don't have it right in front of me here, but I want you to check out uh, the, the scriptures 
on that because there's a, a version that also says troubles. He delivers us out of our troubles. I don't know about you, but there's many troubles in, in life, right? There's family troubles, business troubles, job troubles, whatever. But God, I just had that rhema for you. He's delivering you out of troubles. So Father, we release that word right now. And uh, Mr. You, the Lord says, the Lord is with you. Amen. There's been a time of real discouragement. And I break off that discouragement and depression right now. In Jesus' name, I just see that the enemy has tried to come against you with discouragement. And God says, don't receive it. Don't receive it. Don't receive it. The Lord says, praise me. Praise me. Get in the word. Continue to be thankful. And praise me, says God. Just praise him. For the Lord says, I am great. And I'm great in your life. And God says, as you praise me, it lifts me up. And it causes the anointing to flow. And the anointing breaks every yoke, says God. So the Lord says, let there even be a 24-hour day of praise in your household, says God, where you have the music going and you're praising me all day. Let it be all day and, ch and, and challenge me, says God. And you will see, uh, you're challenging Lord in the, in the sense that you're going to praise him all day and then you're going to see his anointing flow and he's going to break the yoke. For the Lord says, there are some yokes that have to be broken. And God says, I'm going to break the yokes, even as you praise me. So that's your strategy. Praise him. Amen. And I see you sitting down at the table with your wife and you're reading the word and you're confessing the word and you're praising him also. So the Lord says, just praise me this day. And God says, you will see my spirit move in your life, says God, in a brand new way. And let it be a brand new day for you, says the Lord, where I am breaking yokes and I'm healing you and I'm delivering you. And I'm taking you out, says God. I take you out of the, of the former days and of, the, of the, even the times where you felt like you were in that snowy pit. Amen. But God says, I was always in the pit with you, says the Lord. I was always fighting with you. And I gave you the strength to go on. And the Lord says, I give you the strength now to go on and to, and to fight for me, says God. And to be that man and woman of faith that I've called you to be. So the Lord says, rise up, rise up in my word, rise up and praise me and just thank me for the things that even I've already done in your life, where I've done great and precious things, even within your life, says the Lord. And there are great and precious things to go, says God. So Father, we just thank you right now, uh, Lord, for this great team, husband, wife team. Father, we release that business anointing upon them right now. We release that ministry anointing upon them right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're raising them up to a new level. Even as they praise you, Father, there's a new level of breakthrough that's coming for them, Father. Even in your health, even in your business, even in your family. And the Lord says that uh, there will not be financial lack as you praise me. And there will not be job lack or employment lack, even in your family, says God. And I'm also getting, I'm also hearing, I don't know what you guys have with children, but I'm hearing... There's some uh, uh, younger family members, whether it's your children or whatever, but there's some younger family members that are struggling. And the Lord says, I'm going to raise them up. And then and some are called to ministry, says the Lord, within the family unit. And God says, I'm raising them up to new levels also. So remember to intercede for them, says God. Amen. Lay, uh, lay your prayer coverage down uh, for them, says the Lord. For the Lord says that I have a great plan for them in, in their lives, says God. So, Father, we just seal that word right now in Jesus' name. And we give you thanks, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And, Father, we call forth the finance for these people in the name of Jesus from the north, south, east, and west. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, Father, we seal that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, are there any more, any more new people there, Armani? If you're new, let Armani know. Praise God. If you get an unction on anybody else, Armani, go ahead and let me know. All right. Uh, Jam had a prayer request. Hi, Jam. Are you still on, Jam? <laughs> Did you guys bail out on me? <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is Jam. Okay. Guidance and help and finding the best job position. Yeah. You know what, Jam? We're going to do some uh, job fair type things on Friday night, resume building, different things like that. You know, we got a lot of talented people that know how to do resumes and, and pray in jobs. Amen. Praise God. 
um, our whole elder team is good. Plus we got others and like Armani and other people that, uh, that convene. We got smart people, amen, that are, that are in this congregation uh, that know how to do resumes and, and jobs and all kinds of stuff, amen. And uh, so we're gonna, uh, we have more fun things coming up on Friday night that we're gonna be um, teaching people some things and uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be helpful, amen. Praise God, thank you, Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for Miss Jam. And Lord, we just ask you right now, Father, Lord, that, that you would uh, just guide her to the right job position, Father. And all those who need a job today, I want you to raise your hand, and we're going to virtually touch you by faith. Praise God. Father, I just ask right now, Father, that you would just uh, extend your hand of grace to every person right now who needs help with their job, Father, who needs a new job, Father, or they need favor on their job. Uh, Father, and, and they need the right position that, Lord, that you've called them to walk in. So, Father, we just ask right now, Lord, that, that you, would, you would right the wrongs in the job situation right now. Father, that you would open doors, uh, Father, for all those needing a job right now. In the name of Jesus, all those that lost a job and need a job, Father, open doors for them. In Jesus' name, that they'll, they'll have another job. And Father, for Miss Jamla, she wants the right position. For those that not only want a job, but they want, they want the God-ordained position for them, Father. Because you know, when we walk in our calling, we're blessed. Amen. It feels right. It, your spirit is, is right. Everything jives. Uh, that doesn't mean it's always easy. But it, the Bible says, walk in your calling. Father, we want to walk in our calling, whatever that is. So Father, I just ask you in Jesus' name, Father, that help Jam. Lord, Lord, cause her to be in the right position. Open the door. Open the door for all those out there who are willing to walk in their calling, Father, and want that right position. So, Father, we call forth the jobs from the north, south, east, and west right now in Jesus' name. And we call forth the finance and the resources. Father, people need cars out there today. If you need a car today, I want you to type in, I need a car. Okay? There's people out there that don't have transportation or can't afford it or whatever. You know, our God is a miracle working God. Okay, let's let's give him latitude to perform miracles. Amen. Praise God. You must, somebody might have a car out there. It needs to be fixed and you don't have the money to fix it. Okay, God can supernaturally lay it on somebody's heart to supply you with some money or somebody come along and just fix it for you. Just want to fix it. Okay, let's let's talk car for the moment. Anybody with a car issue, I want you to type type your type your name in. Okay? Car issues. Okay, is there anybody out there right now that's a car issue? Okay, any anybody? I know one lady I was dealing with uh, earlier yesterday had a car issue. Okay, and she's a friend of the ministry. So I know one person. Is there anybody else? Well, I'll give you a minute, our, our money, to uh, catch up here. If anybody has any car issues? Okay, praise God. Car just came up in my spirit. As you know, to get the right job, you got to have wheels, right? You got to have transportation to get to your job. <laughs> Amen. Either take the bus or get a friend to take you or have your own car. Amen. Is there anybody, Armani? All right, give me a thumbs up there if you can. Praise God. Okay, well, we're going to pray for, I see this one person, uh, Zarina, uh, needs... Um, help with, with her uh, transportation. So Father, we just lift up Zarina to you right now in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Father. Jam needs a new car. Oh, look at that. Okay. All right. Okay. So Jam, uh, Chisa, and Kimberly, and Zarina, Father, for all of them right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just ask, Father, give Jam a, a, a different car, Father. Amen. Whether it's new or used or whatever, whatever the car is that's right for her. Father, I ask you to bring a car along for her. Open up a, a door for her, Father, supernaturally, that she'll have the right car in the name of Jesus, the one that you've picked out for her, Father, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just thank you, Father, for that right now in Jesus' name. And for, um, oh, a bunch of people. See, look at that. Tisha, Kimberly Williams, Ellis King, Dr. Phoebe, Deborah, a new car, a new car. Father, for all these people right now, we just ask, Father, for those who need cars, Father, that you would bring along a car for them, Father. Lord, that you open up a supernatural deal for them. Father, you can make all grace abound towards us that we have sufficiency 
in all things, in all things. And so, Father, we just believe you right now for that new car for these people, Father, for the whether it's used or new or whatever, but it'll be new for them. Amen. That, Lord, you bring along a different vehicle for them. Lord, something better, something better that's going to meet their need. And, and, Lord, be financially affordable in the name of Jesus. And, Father, I just thank you right now for deals. Amen. I just uh, sense like right now there's some deals on cars um, because people haven't always been buying because of the pandemic. Amen. So you might, might want to start checking around. Okay. Um, I just sense that there's car deals out there right now. Check with used lots. Check with new lots. Don't limit yourself. If you need, if you need a car, okay, don't have a mindset that says, well, it's a used car lot, so I'm not going to go there. Or it's a new car lot, I'm not going to go there. Okay, let God lead you. Okay, let him lead you. Amen. Pray about it. And, and wherever you feel led, you know, I would say exhaust the resources. Okay, uh, look everywhere. You even might want to look on online uh, and, and see. Okay, there's... Um, What's that? Car Fox, whatever, online. You know, look, look at everything and then pray about it and let God lead you, okay? You might be surprised uh, where God leads you to get a vehicle. So be open to the leading of the spirit because God knows exactly where that vehicle is for you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us to not have a locked mindset, okay? God can't do exploits and miracles when we have a locked mindset. We have to be willing to flow with his spirit. So, Father, we just thank you right now. Amen. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You know, um, I used to have a mindset that said, don't go on a, uh, on a new car lot uh, to get service my car because they're going to charge me more money. That's what I heard my whole life. You know, the Lord led me to go on to, I have a Toyota. I use a Toyota dealer, okay, to do uh, the maintenance on my car. And the Lord told me exactly which one to go to and for my car. And do you know that they've even done some free things for me? I mean, it's been amazing. Uh, I remember even one time I had a, I had a problem with the hatch on, on my car. And the Lord said, take it right now to the dealer. I took it to the dealer. Uh, they fussed around with it. And they got it working. And they did it free. They didn't even charge me for it. And that was a new dealership. Okay. So God can make all grace abound towards you. Amen. And so, Father, I just thank you right now. Lord, don't let us have locked mindsets. You know, we have to get rid of locked mindsets with everything. Okay. And then there's, there's occasions where, you know, you, you have something new or, or, or you have something used. And, uh, and I, I you know my husband and I have talked a lot about, about this. Um, sometimes we think to ourselves, well, you know, uh, if we have a used item, then there's, there's something automatically wrong with it. No, you can, you can have a, a used item. I've gone to Salvation Army many times and bought used items and it's been just like new. Okay, so be led by the spirit. Be led by the spirit, okay? The, the furniture in our facility, the couches, some of them were given to us free and some of them came from the Salvation Army and they looked just like new. Okay, and the Lord specifically led me to go there to get those pieces of furniture. They were designated for us. Amen. So let's not have a locked mindset. Okay. Let's believe God. Amen. Let's try to be led. Uh, amen. So Father, we just thank you right now. Amen. Uh, Jennifer Brim's sister needs a new car. So Father, we thank you for these cars coming forth right now. It's a new season, a new car in Jesus name for all these people. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Who, need, who needs a, a new place to live? Amen. Uh, you're, you're oh, okay. You're, you have a situation. Um, let's, let's do homes first. Okay. Do you need homes, uh, uh, a, a place to live? Okay. Whether it's an apartment, a home, uh, whatever. Okay. If you need a new place to live, type your, type your name in. And if you need a roommate, okay. Um, uh, if you want to type your name in and say roommate, that's fine. Okay. Anything to do with housing. Let's get housing. You got to have wheels and you got to have a place to live. Amen. You need a roof over your head. So let's cover that. Amen. Praise God. We can believe God for that too. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm just hearing the Lord say he wants to bring down mortgage prices. For those of you that own homes, um, have real estate, whatever, there's people out there that, that do. 
And I just heard Lord say he wants to bring down the cost for the mortgage. So that means, amen, that um, you're either going to refinance, uh, you know, he's going to give you some kind of deal. Now, my husband's telling me, you know, inflation's out there and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, again, God can make all grace abound towards you. And this is not something that, that we've earned. It's just because he's a good God. It's the goodness of God. Amen. So let's just believe him. Let's not worry about what's going on with the inflation. Okay, let's God, let God be God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And then we're going to get the healing next to what I hear him say. Okay, so Father, did I miss one here? Let's see. Oh, I miss Carol. I'm sorry, Carol. Uh, prayer for division. Okay, let me let me get the homes and then Carol, I'm going to go, go back to you. Okay, Armani, don't let me miss anybody here. Amen. Yeah, I know. I'm tasking with a lot of stuff today. <laughs> Amen. All right. But you're smart, Armani. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you right now. Amen. Uh, for the homes out there. Lord, whoever needs a home, whoever needs, whoever needs an apartment or a mobile home, whatever, whatever the shelter is. Amen. Father, we just ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you meet every need today. Father, let all grace upon towards them that they have sufficiency in all things. We call forth these homes from the north, south, east, and west in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, for it. Oh, my. Look at this list. Okay. Alima. Jamie, Kimberly, Jennifer, Wilson, and Kasia, Chelsea, Carol. Oh, there's Carol with Laura, Laura Mortgage. Amen. Uh, Mia and Jam. Okay. Praise God. Um, all right. So Mia and Jam, you want to own a home? You don't own one at the current time. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Father, uh, for Lima, Jamie, Kimberly, Jennifer, Wilson, Chelsea. Yes. Father, we just ask for their homes for them right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, uh, Lord, lead and guide them. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, open up uh, opportunities for them, Father. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we just ask uh, that you would make it um, uh, uh, affordable. Amen. For Carol Kelly, Father, we just ask, Father, that you lower the mortgage. And Carol, I specifically got a word on mortgage. I don't get that too often. I don't recall Prof saying that too much. So, I mean, that was right off the press. Okay, well, all this was, but that just, boom, went right through me. So God's going to do something with your mortgage, Carol. Okay, all those uh, who need a lower mortgage, God's going to do something. Okay, there's, there's movement on it. There's an anointing on it right now. So Carol, start praying that in. I mean, you probably haven't, but I mean, stay on it, okay? Um, you know, you can. I don't care whether there's inflation or not. God, again, he can make all grace abound towards you. Um, so, you know, I want to tell you, um, the home that Jeff and I live in, God gave this place to us as a ministry home. And, um, uh, and you know, we, we could have never afforded this. And the, and the Lord uh, gave me the strategy for how to get this place. And I was a veteran, so I used a VA loan. And then, uh, and then he had me refinance three times. And so there were different deals through the past years about refinancing. And so through the refinancing, of course, it lowered the mortgage every time. Now, when you refinance, you do have to shell out some money, but he made it all affordable. The whole deal was made affordable supernaturally. And so um, just believe him for it, okay? Don't worry about inflation, what's going on. God can make all grace and bone towards us. Amen. Praise God. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I know Apostle Jeff was talking on grace today. And look how much grace is coming up. And look how much grace is being poured out in all of us right now. Lord, we just give you praise and honor and glory. And thanks, Father. Lord, for all these homes, Father. Bring these homes about, Father, for your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. And, and by the way, give us praise reports. When you get the car, when you get the home, when the mortgage goes down. These are all miracles, just like healings. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for Mia and Jam, Lord. They want to own a home, Father. We ask you to bring it about for them, Father, that they can they they want to purchase, Father, uh, Lord. And then for Michelle Cheney, home purchase, Father, for her too. Amen. And Amanda, uh, Lord, we just thank you for Maria that he wants to rent or sell her condo, Father. Just bring about bring about the right people, Father. Yes, God, that she can rent or sell it in the name of Jesus. And for those who need these homes again, Father, we just ask. Lord, that your grace would abound towards them, that you would open up doors supernaturally for them, Father, that you make a way for them in Jesus' name, that there'll be a strategy for them to purchase. 
a strategy for them uh, to get a, a better place, Father. And so, Father, we just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And um, I'm just hearing the Lord say that for all of you uh, who are trying to purchase homes, um, he said, study, uh, study the market. Okay, look at what's going on in, in the market. Um, learn about uh, mortgages. Learn about interest rates and those kind of things. Okay, um, it's good that, you, that we want one, but I'm hearing the Lord say, study the elements that go into the purchase so that when the time comes, you know what's a good deal and what's not. Okay, that, and then the Lord can speak to you more specifically. Okay, praise God. I had to learn about refinancing. Okay, I, I had to learn about, uh, you know, the different types of loans. Okay, the VA loan and, and all these other types of loans. Okay, I had to learn about these, these things. And so the Lord wants us knowledgeable. Okay, and so that way he can speak to us more specifically. Okay, he'll tell you, you know, for example, get the VA loan and you know what he means. Okay, praise God. So that's what I'm hearing the Lord say. Do the due diligence now. Okay, and study. And, and be looking, be expecting. And, and for those of you who want a home, you got to tell the Lord what you want. You want two bedrooms, one bedroom, three bedrooms. You know, what do you want? Tell him what you want, okay? What you'd like to have. And uh, praise God, and you know, and he'll make it affordable for you. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And we have to, we have to purchase and live within our means, okay? Praise God. You look at your income, you look at your expenses, Amen. And yes, we're believing for better jobs and all that, uh, but we need to use wisdom, okay, and and not not purchase more than what we can handle, okay? Because God does not want you uh, having to uh, give give your home up, uh, you know, because you can't meet meet the mortgage. So make sure that you're using wisdom in your purchase. So Father, we just thank you, Lord, for that right now. Remember, I said that to the Lord. I said, Lord, if you make it affordable for us uh you know yeah of course we'll take anything you want to give us amen we're believing you for affordability amen and that's what god did he had his uh you know to use a va loan and 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 refinance praise god thank you lord so lord we just thank you right now uh father for making these things affordable for the people in jesus name amen thank you lord thank you lord praise god all right praise the lord Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Lord said healing. All right, praise God. Arms again. I'm getting arms again. Anybody with an arm issue? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just uh, praise you right now, Lord, for healing. We stir up the healing anointing right now, the gifts of healing and the working of miracles, Father, all the gifts, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, those with arm issues right now, with tendonitis, arthritis, any type of bone issues in the arms, uh, discomfort. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just ask a healing touch to be upon your people right now. In Jesus' name, if anybody has any arm issues of any kind, just uh, type type your name in. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just lift them up to you right now. In Jesus' name, we're going to pray for Apostle Jeff. Uh, sometimes he has pain in his arm. Uh, we, we come against a pain uh, in, uh, with tendonitis or whatever it is. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke that and we just declare uh, Lord, that there'll be no further pain in Jesus' name, because by his stripes, we are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, back issues. I'm praying for my back too. Lower back issues, uh, any type of pain uh, in, in the back, uh, any type of disc issues. Okay, let's, let's get the back first. Uh, any type of vertebrae uh, type issues, a disc, yeah, a disc uh, out of alignment. Uh, or whatever, degenerative problems, different problems that are causing uh, back pain. Uh, so Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak to the lower back right now in Jesus' name, and we command all the discs to be uh, rejuvenated, to be restored, to be realigned with the back, with the vertebrae, the way it's supposed to be in the body. We break the power of pain right now in Jesus' name. We come against it with the blood of the Lamb, and we declare health and healing. And every person right now is raising their hand who has a back issue in Jesus' name. Lord, we release healing from backs right now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. For by his stripes, we are healed in Jesus' name. Okay, anybody with hip problems, either hip, Father, in the name of Jesus, hip and tailbone areas, 
Father, we just release healing to the hips and the tailbone right now. In Jesus' name, any soreness that's popped up as aches and pains, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus, and we just release healing right now. In Jesus' name, healing, Lord. Healing is the children's bread. In Jesus' name, amen. A sciatic nerve. Somebody's still dealing with a sciatic nerve out there. If that's you, raise your hand. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you. Father, we just release a healing uh, for all those dealing with sciatic nerve problems. Father, in the name of Jesus, any type of nerve problems throughout the body, Father, we just claim a healing on the nervous system right now and, and nerve endings to be restored. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, nerve connections, nerve junctions uh, within the body right now, restoration in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you. We rebuke these uh, water retention problems in Jesus' name, the bloating, amen, the uh, anybody having those type of issues, amen, we're believing God for healing. Father, we thank you, Father, uh, that the water will dissipate normally through the body, amen, in Jesus' name, there'll be no more water retention or bloating uh, in, the, in the name of Jesus. Uh, any areas of inflammation uh, in the body, Father, we rebuke that right now in Jesus' name. Uh, hearing, I'm getting hearing, uh, Father, in Jesus' name, for those that are having trouble with hearing, Amen. Somebody needs some new hearing aids. Father, we just ask right now, Father, that you would even uh, make all grace abound towards them, Father, that they have the finances uh, and the good doctors. Amen. Uh, for the hearing aids, Father, bring the hearing aids uh, in Jesus' name, Father. Restore and restore hearing, Father, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Father, on the left uh, ventricle right now, in the name of Jesus, whoever that is out there, we just release a healing on the left of ventricle right now in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Deep problems. Father, for anybody with plantar fasciitis, we just break the power of that right now. A corns, a soreness in the feet, pain in the feet. We break, we break that right now in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Lord. Yeah, foot issues. Um, Amen. Anybody needing a healing in their feet for any reason, uh, Father, we thank you for healing right now. Supernatural healing in the name of Jesus. Supernatural healing, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you and we praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Armani, it sounds still good. You can break away from it. Just give me a thumbs up. I'll make sure everybody's still hearing me okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Okay. Praise God. All right. Praise the Lord. We just thank you, Lord. We just seal that word right now in Jesus' name. Hey, we want to give you an opportunity for anybody out there today who's not sure that they know Jesus, want to make sure that you know Jesus. Uh, amen. We're going to give you a chance to, to pray with me right now. Amen. And let's invite in Jesus into our hearts, our personal Savior. Say this, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me my sins. I want to live for you from this moment on. In Jesus' name. If there's anybody out there today who would like the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking of the tongues, we want to give you the opportunity. Uh, to do that also. Amen. It's a free gift that God gives to anybody who asks. So Lord, we just ask you right now in Jesus' name, we just release an anointing for the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking other tongues. And Father, we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. We seal that word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to thank you tonight for tuning in to our broadcast. We want to remind you, all right, that, um, amen, uh, January 16th is our first live in-person service. And we're going to be doing our word of the Lord. And that'll be starting at 2.30 in the afternoon. We will be on Facebook uh, as we have been, but we'll also be live, okay, from our facility in Alexandria. And if you're near the area or would like to come out and see us uh, and you don't know the address, you can go online to our website, www.covenant-life-church.org. And also, um, yeah, we are having Monday night service tomorrow night. Yes, uh, we are starting uh, praise God. And so we will have Monday night 
uh, table talk tomorrow. Uh, actually, it's Monday night Bible study. And uh, so we're starting tomorrow. Amen. And so come on out. Amen. By Facebook. It's all Facebook on Monday nights. It's real easy to plug in on Monday nights. Amen. And so we'll be doing that at 730 tomorrow night. And then uh, Tuesday is prayer. 11, uh, on the 11th Tuesday at 730 is prayer. So we're starting our whole new regimen now. Okay. And we're, we're back. We're back on path. Monday night. Bible study, 7.30, Tuesday night, 7.30 prayer, and then Friday, um, 7.30. Amen. Uh, Friday is Facebook. Uh, Friday the 14th is Facebook only, Friday night, and uh, the 16th is when we start in person once again. We're going to start with word of, of the Lord. So this week is all Facebook. Okay, Monday, Friday, Facebook, Tuesday is prayer, and you can dial in. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thanks, Armani uh, and, and Michelle. Uh, this Friday the 14th is Martin Luther King weekend. I forgot. Amen. Sorry about that. So we're off on Friday, and we're off on the 17th. Okay, but we will have... Um, we will have Bible study tomorrow night. Am I right about that? Um, Andrea, or did I? Yeah, let me see. I can keep my notes in front of me. Pastor Andrea did a great job of sending out a very thorough list. And, um, and if you did not get that email, then go ahead and type in your email address and we'll resend it to you. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, hi. Um, hi, we're still on uh, online, honey. All right, so uh, let me see here. Where is Covenant Life Church? Okay, so just type your name in and we will get this email to you. It was very thorough, she did a great job. So let me go to it right now. Monday, January 10th, 7.30, Facebook only. Uh, Elder, are, are, are you online? I'm sorry, I wasn't tip top today. So I forgot to check with the kids on what we were doing with Tuesday here. Monday, January 10th, 7.30, Facebook only. Sunday, January 16th, no prophetic class, one to two. Sunday, January 16th, 2.30, yes, Facebook and in person for Word of Lord service. Uh, Monday, Friday the 14th, no service because of Martin Luther King. Monday, uh, no service because of Martin Luther King. Okay, praise God. Um, I didn't see anything on Tuesdays. Is Elder doing prayer on Tuesday? Right. That's right, Michelle. Uh, where is Elder? Is she out there? Okay. We will I tell you what we'll do. My air on that. I wasn't sure what we're doing Tuesday. I got to check with Elder. She's running uh, Perth Tabernacle. So... I will find out if she's doing prayer on Tuesday and we'll send out a, a text or email to you if there's prayer. Okay, we'll fix it up. I apologize. Okay, I didn't state on the announcement and I forgot what we agreed on. So uh, you'll have to forgive me. I've been a little bit under the weather here. But anyway, okay, praise the Lord. But praise God, we're making it. Amen. All right, so if you didn't get that email, uh, that nice laundry list of what we're doing over the next few weeks, we'll get that out to you. Okay, so, but we are doing, uh, praise God, we're going to start with our Bible study tomorrow night. Facebook only tomorrow night, 7.30. Okay, praise the Lord. So Father, we just thank you right now for this time. 
We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our midst. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that despite the situations that uh, that we find ourselves in, Lord, we know that you're you're God of all and you're God of grace and you love us, Lord. And Father, we just praise you and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this communion Sunday and what it meant. It's the shed blood of Jesus it's because of the shed blood of Jesus that we have health, healing, deliverance, and, and life and more abundantly. And so, Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory, Father. And we thank you, Father, for this time. Lord, we seal the word now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, sorry for some glitches today, but this is real time. We're real people. We do real things. <laughs> Amen. And uh, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise for it. We thank you for all the people who are with us. Amen. We bless you in the name of the Lord. And again, we want to direct you to our website, www.covenant-lationshipchurch.org. There's a donate button in the upper right corner. And we ask you just to please donate anything in uh, that, that you, you can, and we appreciate it very much. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, now for it. And we thank you for the people in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, everybody, good night. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow night at 730. Good night, everybody.